What's going on guys? Welcome back to Street Fapper Performance Channel. And today we got our Hellcat swapped Genesis. I know for some of you that don't know about the car, first swap that we've done on it was a 6.4 liter uh, scat pack motor. But then the customer changed his mind, it was not enough power. So here we are with a red eye Hellcat motor in here. Uh, a little bit, a few different changes from one to another, but we'll go through that in a little bit. Right now, just kind of sitting the way it is, uh, not in its final stage, but it does run and drive and everything is fine. So we're kind of gonna show you around, show you what we did different, and then we'll take it for a spin. All right, so we're just kind of gonna go through it and I'll show you what is different and what else we had to add it. So we'll start at the front as we always do. We did have to add our cooling system for our superchargers. So we went ahead and got a Mishimoto, uh, water to air cooler, cut up some brackets. Uh, instead of running the dual uh, OEM setup, it's got one big one. And then we're still using our OEM water pump that is sitting over here now. That's kind of the only open spot that we had up front to mount it. It did come out pretty good. It's still all OEM lines and uh, reservoir that's mounted. Uh, just kind of made some brackets and try to hold it in OEM position as much as possible so all these lines do fit. In case you need a new one, you can just go to do and snag one or whatever. Uh, another thing we did have to add was this catch can type of deal that comes with a Hellcat swap. So that's another addition. And then another thing up front, we did have to add an oil cooler uh, that comes with this engine. So this is still OEM lines. They just got uh, heated and kind of bent into shape to run to our uh, oil cooler fittings by the motor where the filter sits. So this is still, as far as uh, all the lines go, are OEM besides maybe a few flexible lines that just didn't have the same routing uh, that we do here. We do have a temporary ECU installed right now. It is unlocked ECU, but it's not what's going to be getting used in this car. The one that we have coming will be unlocked and then programmed. Uh, for this setup, but right now that's what it's getting used. That's why you see that thing is loose laying in the corner Just so we don't need to mount it uh, just so yet Other than that up front everything was uh, pretty straightforward Due to a supercharger we did have to cut out some of this firewall here and then make a plate just because whenever you uh, Put the motor in it does hit this uh, tray where the windshield wipers sit so we did have to knot some of that out and then make a plate for it. And it's nicer because you can remove the scowl, take this plate out, and then you can work on the back of the motor over here and reach everything that you need to do. So one more thing that was different was a fuel system. So it does come on this motor, it is on a passenger side and on a 6.4 it is on the driver's side. So we did have to extend our fuel hose over to the other side. Uh, another thing that is different is that we did change the engine bay harness and uh, not a power control module but the body control module just because you got to have that for the transmission to shift properly and just to read some of the parameters that the car is looking for otherwise this is not going to work it's reading all crazy transmission will always go into a third gear right away when you put it from park to drive it goes to gear three instead of first so you do have to change that over. Uh, other than that, this engine harness came with the motor, so that's original to this engine. And uh, that also was a requirement to get everything working on a cluster. Like you guys saw, the little Cheetah logo comes on and then you get all your gauges on your CD, or CD player screen. We're gonna throw it up and just show you from the bottom. There was a few things we were mentioning before when first doing that 6.4 swap. We did have to do a different starter to clear the rack, but now with this engine, the starter is actually on the right side of the car, which is excellent. It's never going to touch the steering rack like it uh, did rub a little bit the very first time we've done it. Anyway, so this setup is one inch, one inch longer. I don't know if it was the transmission that was one inch longer, 
when we measured this, so our drive shaft did not fit. So we, had to do, we did have to shorten our drive shaft by one inch and redo our uh, transmission now. I had to drill different holes to pick up the pickup points on the, on the frame. But anyway, that's basically it. All we have to do, but we can show that from the bottom and uh, not much different there. All right, guys, here's the bottom of the car. It doesn't look much different from last video if you guys watched it. If you haven't, go back and watch it. But anyway, here's the oil lines from the oil cooler. We talked about that we did keep these OEM, which they are. And the only thing I want to point out, this oil cooler where the two fittings go, the OEM location of this thing is actually clocked over to where it's sitting and pointed right at the subframe. So we did have to remove it, modify it to point us straight out. That way we can get access to plug our lines in. So the starter right here, here's the starter I want to show for the guys that didn't see it. This is so much nicer now not having the starter sitting over here where the steering rack is. And it's actually sitting on its own uh, in the wide open area, So which was cool. The drive shaft was shortened by an inch as I already mentioned before. That was basically about it. It was weird that the whole measurement of the transmission was one inch longer. It kind of threw everything off. But now we know, now you know. So but other than that, underneath is still all the same, not much changed. All right guys, the owner's coming and uh, we're excited to show him the vehicle. Probably gonna take it for a spin and see what it feels like. Hey brother, <laughs> that one. A lot of money. Come here guys, I wanna show you one thing. All the struggle for this logo. And for the green belt. Oh, the green belt. Everyone knows about green belt. Thousands of dollars spent <laughs> for the green belt. You gotta have that one. But this is the moment we're gonna test drive it. Alex called me earlier. Everything is uh, smooth and run, but they had to do some more. The computer program, some stuff, you know better. So I can't wait, but he says it's gonna drive. And let's go for a test drive as soon as possible. Let's do it. Let's do it.
guys, so here we go. We just went out, did several rollers for you, roll around. Uh, this thing's definitely a whole lot of power for this little thing. And uh, not to mention this is still in the black key and the red key option is not unlocked, but it will be once we get the new ECU in. So other than that, she's running pretty damn good, staying cool, definitely a lot of power. I wish you guys could experience that and just uh, driving this thing, but I'm sure many of you have uh, similar motors and something else. But we still got to throw the front bumper on, like I said, figure out something with that scoop. We have a scoop that we might install just so the rain doesn't go get on the top of the supercharger and get everything wet. But that'll be all for today's video. I appreciate you guys watching. Please like, subscribe, comment down below, and we'll see you in the next one. Take it easy.